And that is episode featuring Stoneboy with Jehovah in the background. You're still watching Simply Showbiz right here on TV3. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're just tuning in, you're welcome. Now, today we're discussing meeting music production standards the way forward. Joining me to have this hard conversation as my my panelists have already told me off air is uh we your ting uh, we your ting sorry he's a music producer he's an entertainment analyst or ting you're welcome Thank you, and also guest. i have kofi i am beat menace boachi answer now he's a multidisciplinary artist and creative entrepreneur you're welcome as well Thank you. Now, when I saw your title, I was like, okay, I will need you to. But I actually ended up finding out you do bits and pieces of everything. You add um, other parts of, a, you know, creative, um, you know, stuff to your, your craft. And so I was like, that is broad for, you know, for, for someone to do. Let me start off with you. How did you get yourself into music production? And is it rewarding so far? Has it been rewarding so far? Well, that's a slippery slope. Thanks once again for having me. You're welcome. Um, Yes, uh, just like you pointed out earlier, I do wear several hats. Mm. And I've always been intrigued with music, you know. I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, I spoke to my mom and I, I was trying to remind her that I thought the earliest memory of my hearing a particular song and I sort of sung the song and of course over the years I discovered the, the artist and the music and I played it for her and she was shocked. She said there was no way I could have remembered that because I was probably about two years old. Wow. Because they lost the vinyl, I think somebody borrowed it and never returned mm. it back. You know, so I, music has always been an important part of my life growing up and even more so because I consider myself like a creative person because mm. I do quite a number of things yeah. and you know do it professionally so music has always been you know a part of me you know as, as, a, as a means of expression right so, to speak. so right. probably I've been producing for give or take professionally about 16 18 years Wow yes Wow have I, I answered I your you question? I a lot Sorry. of wow a lot today because, you know, with the people I am joined in studio <laughs> with, because you have done amazingly well as well, but I think you were, you were adding something quickly. No, no, no. I wanted to know if I'd answered your question. You have question answered, was, was but loaded. I will get to the point where I'm finding out whether if it's been rewarding so far. Oh, right. Yeah, we'll right. get to that point. But I am going to um, ask you as well. How did music production come for you? Um, to me, creativity has always been a passion. Mm. Creativity is not something you learn. You only, after discovering yourself who you want to be right. in that space, then you need to go through the process to become a professional. Mm. So with me, <clears throat> it started when I was, you know, little and my mom used to go to church, follow her. She'd be thanking our moms, huh? Exactly. <laughs> know. You know, sing songs. Then I started with the drums. Right. Gradually onto the percussion and then onto the keyboard. So right from day one, I knew I wanted to get into the music space. Mm. But as to where, you didn't I didn't know. know. Yet. You know, right. till on and on and on. I played for a couple of churches. Pastors followed them around until after our crack academy. And then I realized, no, mm. I want to actually make beats. Right. I want to actually make beats. So music has been part of me okay. from insertion. And right. then mm. yeah, that was when I got myself the right people tutored and then uh, I felt it shouldn't end there. Mm. Took some online courses, you know, delved deep into my craft, got the right people around me. Because uh, creativity is such that the people around you influence what you become. Okay. Gradually. So when you say the right people, what, what, what do you mean? Right people, people who knew, had done it, had gone through, okay. you know, the chains in and outside the country and have seen stuff. Okay you know, to actually associate myself with. Because it's unfortunate, uh, we do not have any creative art school in Ghana. Um, back then, like within the 2000s and all that, you can't get a school where you say, I'm going to learn a sound engineer and mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. You only have to go through people. And after that, if you're able to find smart people who can then nurture you and upgrade yourself, then you can become who you are. So. Uh, that has been my process, okay. and I never cease to learn. So it has opened so many great opportunities for, you. for me to have become a Grammy nominee. 
uh, as at this moment. So, go you, go you. <laughs> um, that's how the journey has okay. you know, been right. for me. Now, um, we, we, at, at the end of the day, want to know what music production you know, entails, what goes into it, and whether if, you know, here in, in Ghana we're working towards, I, I ask him if we have a standard. So I want to find out, yeah, what goes into music production, because I understand we, for the so there's, there's the songwriting part, yeah. there's the arranging, there's the tracking, there's the editing, the mixing, and the mastering. So you can add on if I'm missing anything. There's a programming there's part. There's a programming part. So does it mean that, no, before we get that, Let's give us a little background to you know all of these uh, you know pointers that I've made, like the songwriting bit. Do you, as an artist, as, do you always have to know how to write a song? Because down here we sort of frown on people who have songwriters. I don't know why that is. Some of the biggest people that have made history in the world didn't write their own songs. Mm. You see, as an artist or as a musician, okay, you don't need to overburden yourself with everything. Okay. So you had the like of uh, Michael Jackson yeah. having uh, R. Kelly write for them. You had uh, that, like the Celine Dion's yeah. having R. Kelly write Whitney for them. Whitney Houston as a, at a point Exactly. Time, yeah. You have Neo write for all the big stars. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, you have Akabwa who, yeah, who you know, for, did it yeah. big yeah. with Becca, mm -hmm. Efia. Talk yeah. of like a He's, lot. Because as a musician, you know, you have a lot on your head. Your craft, your performance, your this, your that. So, I'm not saying if you're able to write, it's bad. No, it's not bad. It's actually a plus but for you, it, it's, I guess. It's a plus. Okay. But if you have people write for you, then it, it, and it suits your way your style. and how you want to be projected, mm. then I think, um, to me, it's, it's good. Okay. Because the system always makes sure that everybody gets what they deserve mm. in terms of royalties, mechanical rights, and all those things. So nobody gets treated if you know what you're about right so getting people to write for you in my opinion there's is, nothing wrong with there that it's absolutely okay. it's, it's, it's something that happens has been happening and, and it it's a stop. thing how do we orient Ghanaians to not sort of look at someone differently when they come out to say oh this person wrote the song for me we have architects mm -hmm. they do not go to the site and start you know picking the mortar and mm -hmm. the blocks and bits and pieces. They have the vision, so they They do, have yeah. the vision. Okay. So the writer has that vision. He envisions a song, how it's supposed to be and all that, write it and look at that person who best fits in that, okay. you know, suit. Yeah. He gives the song. They go through, they love it. If they have to make some changes and bits and pieces here, they do it. Don't mm. forget, you have your voice. And that is your stronghold. Mm. Don't worry yourself uh, by trying to forcefully write and not get something right or wrong. Okay. So if you have the voice, you look for writers, they and aid you. They Just like the way you, as a musician, might not be able to make a beat. Mm. So don't force it. Whatever you think your stronghold is, if it's your voice, Work push with it. That. If it's your, 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 your writing skills. Because Akawa coming realized his stronghold was on writing. He did an amazing writing for so many people. And it all blew up. I don't recall any Akawa yeah. song that never blew. It was yeah. mega. Until he realized that and he was a keyboardist. Mm -hmm. He was a programmer then. Until he realized that I can actually use my voice. And it will work perfectly. He trained himself over time. Don't forget, he was even a voice coach then. Yeah. He could mm -hmm. coach you to, to, to get your acts right mm -hmm. to deliver. But at a point when he realized after all that, he also can step up and do that. He did it. Okay. So it, it still let, me, let, me, let me come to you, Kofi. On arranging, what, what, what is that? Uh, well, I, I guess it's one of the most critical yet overlooked aspect of production. Okay. Um, in simple terms, if you take a symphonic orchestra, mm -hmm. right? You're listening to classical music, you have an orchestra of about 200 players. Mm -hmm. Everybody has an instrument. Yeah. Everybody's playing, right? Mm -hmm. 200 instruments in a huge auditorium. And you compare it to our regular, maybe Afro beats or any of these contemporary genres today, mm -hmm. which would comprise probably not 
not more than eight instruments. Okay, okay. drums, bass, synthesizers, percussion, additional keyboards. So let's say eight instruments. You'd realize that most of our music sounds busy and cluttered mm. compared to an orchestral piece that is made of 200 plus instruments playing at the same time. Okay. The difference between the two and the lack of the, the, the clutter in the symphonic orchestral piece is the work of an arranger. An arranger is the person who determines who plays what in a song, how to play it, and when to play it. Mm. And it's a skill. Wow. Let me break it down <laughs> in even simpler terms. For those people watching who love fufu, you go to your favorite chop bar, there's a lady who's driving the fufu. In three, we say, or oh, fufu. Oh, no. fufu right? And you see four sweaty pounders pounding yeah. their lives away. But they never smash the lady's hands. It's because she's concentrating on the moments of silence in between mm. the turns. That's arranging. Everything needs to have its place at the right time. Hmm, I see. I, we, let, let's just, tra then there's tracking. What, what, what's tracking? Tracking is recording. That's oh. the professional term for recording. For the rec okay. Tracking is the technical term used to describe the process of recording an instrument or mm. a performer. Mm. Okay? And so usually you would track after the song has been properly arranged. Arranged. You understand? Okay. Now we need to come back to arrangement because it actually affects the quality of mixing, which is the next stage after mm -hmm. tracking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if a song, you can have a great song sung by a great writer, recorded by a great engineer, or tracked by a great engineer, Mixed by a great engineer, if it's poorly arranged, you would have a problem when it comes to mixing. Why? Because a lot of instruments will be fighting for each other. When you're mixing for clarity and punch, mm. somebody has to sacrifice one instrument to make another shine. Wow. So who, who you know, I don't know if I'm making sense. You are, and I, I, it, it gives me this, uh, you know, it, it puts in perspective how work is done like the, the 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 amount of work that is put in in you know the production and everything now we, we also want to find out at the end of the day mastering how how is it done like is if you you have a song that has not been mastered can you let it go or every every song out there has to be mastered let me let, let me find out from you kofi because <laughs> both of you are smiling why <laughs> Well, that's a, a very open-ended question. Why? Because um, I, I'll have to speak in a broader <laughs> sense. You know, I'm trying to uh, you Don't know, gather my back. thoughts. We want to I'm to trying know. to speak uh, from a broader perspective okay. and also specifically to the times we're in. We're in. Because we, we live in a very fast-paced, ever-evolving digital mm. landscape. And with that content is key mm -hmm. okay we live in a visual audio world mm -hmm. okay we have all these new formats that are now emerging immersive formats you have ambisonics you have dolby atmos you even have broadcast standards so mastering is a very integral part of the production or the post-production process when it comes to sound or music okay and even more so depending on what the deliverables or the final product is supposed to be used for mm. If it's for film or broadcast, broadcast mastering standards are very different from regular audio consumption. So the technical term is if you just port a finally mixed and mastered song mm -hmm. that you would take to iTunes or Apple Music or Spotify and you bring it to be used in a film, okay, as a soundtrack, mm -hmm. okay, or part of a score, or if you were to use it for broadcast formats for a TV show, like your show, for instance. Yeah. The levels or the standards that you typically uh, require for consumption on Spotify or, say, Apple Music is usually too loud. There's something called decibels in sound engineering. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure most of you, if you have amps or um, similar players at home, when you turn the volume knob, you see plus something dB, mm -hmm. decibels, right? So the regular standards for regular music consumption is sometimes between six to eight decibels louder. In sound engineering, you say it's hotter mm. 
mm. than for broadcasts. So if you don't speak to your mastering engineer to have various versions of deliverables of the same product suited for different purposes, you'd be in trouble. Okay. And it's the same for mixes. I'll explain something to you right now. Um, if Shirley does a movie, a Spar Productions movie, and she loves an aqua boisson, and they want to use that particular track in a particular scene mm -hmm. that has a lot of dialogue. So you have the key characters on screen, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of conversation happening. If they use the original song in its original form, and Aquaba tends to be saying a lot of things lyrically, at the exact part that suits that scene, you would have a clash. Mm -hmm. So you even need different versions of a mix that is meant for use for film and for broadcast so that the vocals do not clash with on-screen dialogue. I see. This opens a, you know, an entirely different kind of worms. Yeah, yeah. You know, this conversation I is a very nuanced <laughs> but multi-layered one because failure to adhere to some of these broad... I mean, I am aware of some Ghanaian artists who got some very unique opportunities that could have expose them to a wider audience for use maybe in games, international film productions, and their music was turned away because they did not meet those industry standards for specific use. Wow. Yes. Well, you're still watching Simply Showbiz right here on TV. The conversation has started. It, we're learning at the end of the day just so we can make sure that uh, what we're churning out there is up to standard, global standard, whatever we want to call it at the end of the day. It's uh, Simply Showbiz right here on TV. Thank you very much for joining us. We are having a conversation or we're discussing, um, you know, our music production, whether if it's meeting standards uh, right here in Ghana, even globally as well, the way forward. Now, joining me to have that conversation, we've got Kofi. Kofi uh, has spoke at length where your thing to has said so much. We haven't, we, there's more, by the way, so don't go anywhere. We'll be getting into that uh, some more pretty shortly. But joining me via Zoom is Voodoo Main. He is an Afrobeat hip life artist. Hi, Voodoo Main. It's good to have you join us how are you doing i'm very i'm doing very very well thank you and so much first, one more time yeah thank you for making me chill with the big boys oh yeah <laughs> it, it's good to have you bum bum with us <laughs> <laughs> anyways um let's quickly get uh, to this part of the conversation where we're finding out um it says you are a hip live artist yeah um yes. and you are in nigeria you're a nigerian how do you get the hip life sound again uh, I've been doing uh, this. Uh, this actually from Ghana. I'm, okay. I'm Ghana, you know, but I've been in uh, Nigeria most of the time. Yeah. Okay. So then that that explains because hip life is ours. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now it's it's good we we've actually established that. Now let's talk about how music is done in Nigeria. I'm saying, I'm asking this with regard to um, every time co a conversation about our music production is had, uh, we always have this comparison with Nigeria. Nigeria comes in here and there. How has it been since you, you know, you've been there? How is the music scene like in Nigeria as compared to Ghana here? Do we play, do they play a lot of Ghanaian music out there? Uh, they, they they do play, but not as much as them. And one thing you have to know, Nigeria, the population in Nigeria is very, very big. Mm. You know, so, and it's a lot of them. They have too many talents. They have too many talents than Ghana, you know, but they don't play so much uh, of Ghanaian because maybe some most of the songs that Ghanaian artists do is not, you know, it Nigerians are like, like being in the United States, they all like anything that United States is doing is actually trending in the whole world. So it's like Nigeria is like a big dog mm -hmm. when it comes to music. So when they do a music, that means that anybody that's doing music is supposed to have something that trends, but that go along with whatever they are doing that they can put in their mix. So okay. if you don't have, I don't doing songs that they can actually relate to that being their mix, it's like it's, it's hard for them to to make even the the radio presenters and the TV presenter and the DJs, they say the same thing all the time. They so, want to play. Okay, you've been able you've been able to, you know, um, find your way there. And then we've got Nigerian music some way um, taking over our space here in Ghana. What do you think they're doing differently that Ghanaian artists aren't doing? I think uh, they, they're crossing over. The, the crossing over is very, very important in, in every man's life. You need to like divert. You need to do something different from what you are doing. 
and Nigerians are open to do it. For instance, if I see you are a very good presenter and I, my kid or my child is looking up to you and my child says, uh, Daddy, I want to I want to I want to be like this lady mm. or I want to this uh, this person. Then I have to tell my daughter, look, this is what you need to do. This is what she did for her to be on that level. But you can be better than this lady. You are, or you can be better than this man. You have to go through this particular angle to become who you want to be, that may be better than this person. So when it comes, the same thing when it comes to music, when they are doing music, they do music that attracts global attention, you know, and it's not, sometimes the dancing, but it's not just the dancing. Sometimes they do songs that are very, very touching, you know, that people can relate to. In their Ghanaian music is, is dope like we do we do dope music in ghana too but right now globally most of the people that when when you are doing music you need to make sure that um i, I think i think music actually has come to a point where we need to study we need to like open our eyes and see we shouldn't close our mind onto one part one part and then say that okay we are good with whatever we are doing we need to open our eyes and say that yo what is can this person can this indian man over here understand what i'm doing can this pakistani understand what i'm doing can these people from america really relate to my music can these people from france relate to it so okay. those are things right before uh, you know we, we we don't really have much time sorry about that but let me quickly also find out from you okay um as an artist what is the process that your your music goes through in order for you to feel that this is ready for the market yeah, I heard I heard uh, one of you, I don't know if it's Kofi or something like that, just say something about the mix train and tracking out and stuff like that. Those things are very important because if a DJ has to play a song in a club or play a song in a radio station, first of all, you need to have the, mu the music ready. By being making it ready, you're supposed to make sure that the music is recorded nicely by an engineer. And then it needs to be like arranged properly, like he said, it's very, very important. And then you need to be like have it mixed and then have it mastered. Those are process. You need to go through those process. Gone are the days when we do songs and we don't do too much. Just somebody just do it and they just throw it out. And now the, the kind of equipment they are having, they want to have high quality sound. Mm. So when you do a song, you need to make sure that it is actually properly mixed and properly uh, mastered or tracked out nicely by the engineer, the sound engineer. And then send to the the uh, the mixing engineer, and then then send it to the mastering engineer. Okay. Sometimes it's that doing the mastering. Sometimes too, it's not. All right, Vujumin, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We really appreciate it. and have a good day. Yeah. So much. Thank okay. you so much for having. All right. Us. Now coming back to my in studio, um, you know, guest. Let's talk about this. Do you believe it's, it's a conversation that's been happening for a while now? Do you believe that the longer an artist spends on a track, the better it becomes? No, um, I do not believe that. Okay. If you know what you're doing, mm. it's swift. Unless you're not certain or you feel you're looking for some particular element that is not in there. Okay. Because a song can start its production this morning, and if you have the right people in place, by tomorrow, you need to really have a feel of how the end product should be mm. now this is how it is on, on on an average okay it's divided into let me say three people on an average in ghana the programmer the mix engineer and then the mastering engineer okay so the programmer is the guy that plays the beat mm. he just plays the beat you know put the pianos the strings the bass and everything in there so he is a programmer okay now we have the mix engineer the mix engineer is the guy that makes sure that, oh, um, the bass is too much. Let me tune it this way. The voice, I think it needs more highs than lows. Um, I want to add some auto-tune to the voice. There is some twitch here, twitch there. There is some inconsistencies in the voice uh, when it comes to the chord that, you know, progression and all that, the way it was sung. Mm. So let me tune to make sure that I have everything, you know, on point mm. so that person is the mix engineer he makes sure that you're listening to the song and it's sounding good there is no clash with an instrument and a voice and you know the bass is clashing with the kick and all that so that is the job of the mix engineer and then we have the mastering engineer 
the guy that makes sure that your song is up to the standard for the market. Okay. It doesn't matter wherever the, it's being taken to, but he needs to make sure, pay the request of the artist, or how or wherever they want to place the song, that the song is up to. So the height and everything has been tuned properly. Okay. Your, 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 your bass, your sub, and everything. Volume. The level, the volume is actually up to. So when you drop it in a speaker, you realize that, wow, mm. the punch and everything is there. Normally, in Ghana, you have the guy who plays the beat. Now, it's even changing because people play his beat and, you know, they, they just send it out to other people to kind of like ride on. And when they get the beat, they decide on who to actually record with. Okay. If not, the guy that plays the beat, if you engage in services, unfortunately, there is not much money being pumped into our system. So you would need one guy to do everything. Professionally, it's not supposed to be like that. But this is Ghana where we, we think... Why would you want to master a song for me and take me a thousand Ghana CDs or two thousand Ghana CDs? Oh, then I think this guy can do everything. So the guy that makes the beat takes your vocal, that he tracks your vocal as well. Mm. Once he's done, co side by side, you arrange. Oh, me pay I like this one here. I place this here, put this harmony here. That that you arrange and make sure that from chorus to verses to hooks, everything. It's in order. Now, okay. once that is done, uh, that's your arrangement. And then you move on to the mix and then the mastering stage right. before okay. you proceed. Okay, Kofi, um, let, me, let me find out from you. Um, so, here in Ghana, in order for our music, or not for us to be sure that, uh, you know, we've met the standard, our music can cross a uh, global threshold or whatever it, 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 it is called out there, what are we not doing right or what should we be doing right? We, we, don't, we lack the requisite training, first and foremost. Okay. Um, you need to understand that um, audio engineering is physics. Okay? There's a creative aspect to it, but it's also a science. Mm. Okay? So you need the perfect intersection between the art and the science. So you need to, for somebody to really be a great engineer, at the very least, even if they are not formally trained, they need to be aware of setting concepts about okay. the physicality of sound and how to manipulate it. You understand? Mm. Secondly, we need, to, we need to pay attention to what's happening globally. Because in Ghana, we don't have standards to begin with. We don't have regulatory bodies that ensure that something goes on air, you know, on TV3, and the audio has to be of this specific quality. It doesn't exist. You understand? Okay. So everything in our space is Takashi. So for us to compete globally, we need to be aware of what's happening globally, what the standards are, and we need to put in the requisite measures to ensure that practitioners in the area get the requisite training that's required or needed to meet those standards. Mm. Now, speaking of which, um, you, you are the founding member of the Audio Engineers and Producers Association of Ghana. I am a founding member. You're a founding member. Yeah, so there are a number of people. A number of people. So, Where your thing is a member? So, uh, <laughs> give us a little um, you know, background to that. Like, you, you, came, you guys decided to found that because of the problem you had noticed in our system? Yes. Okay. Part of... P part of How is it doing? Is, is um, it? Well, like everything else um, in a creative space, it, it's not devoid of its challenges. Primarily because it's one of the few times or one of the first times that there's a collective, a collective was formed that went beyond just the groupings of people, but that actually went ahead to have it like properly incorporated, you know, and recognized by the laws of Ghana mm. as, as an association with a legal charter, okay. primarily, first and foremost, to unite practitioners who are producers and audio engineers. Now, these are distinct yet linked disciplines, and I'll explain further. And also to foster uh, a community that, that, that promotes growth, um, interaction, primarily with the sole purpose of improving our skill okay. and our understanding what it takes to be to be responsible for going by setting titles, mm. you know, mm. just as it is elsewhere, so people can be be trained and they can become bet, better practitioners in that area. Okay, um, let me take your your thoughts as well on how uh, you know meeting the global standard. What's the way? Forward? I think it's in two parts. And this is you wrapping up. Please. Yeah, I think it's in two parts. The two parts first is the passing and how well you've acquired your mental 
you know, or your ideas to, 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 to kick off. So it's the person and the equipment. Mm. Because irrespective of how dynamic or great you are, what a red camera can do, <laughs> I'm very sorry, you can't just use a phone camera to do those things. Okay. They never produce the same thing. And now you see a lot of people walking around with laptops um, and mics doing stuff. That is just the beginning. But at the end of the day, when those things are done, where do we take them to finalize, to finish, or to retract and make sure that we're getting the quality that we need? Mm. It's equipment-based. That's why you, there are so many television stations, but some are very distinct when it comes to picture, sound quality, and everything. That has got nothing to do with the people controlling them. It has got everything to do with the right equipment and the right people who knows how to manipulate the equipment to achieve greatness. Okay. So it's two-way. You can have the right people who can achieve greatness, but without the right equipment to allow them to achieve greatness, you won't get anywhere. And when you, you can have the right equipment, if you, do not write, if you don't have the right people who knows how to manipulate the equipment, you still won't get anywhere. So the global standards are there. They have always been there. Because today, if you listen to Bob Marley's songs, which was done then and remastered later on, I mean, it still sound and can compete with any current good song or good reggae song that you hear in town. So the global standards has always been there. But the question is, in Ghana, global standards are not just achieved by saying it. Mm. They are achieved through money. Investors, um, I think um, someone, this is very quickly because, you know, they're telling us we have to go. Um, quickly, I, I, I saw somewhere that uh, I think Mr. Logic did mention at, uh, some time back that um, up-and-coming artists, if they know they don't have money, they shouldn't do music. Is, 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 is that the reason maybe some, some artists don't master their work? You, is you, that what it is? When you're kicking off, money plays an in, you know, a greater part of whatever. Okay. But creativity starts everything. Okay. Don't forget, people have the money, they do not have the people. Mm. If you have everything it takes to be taken onto the world platform and you start, I mean, people can always hold you and take you to where you want to be. The only thing is, let your craft be what can take you anywhere. Because mm. no matter how much money that will be invested in you, if you really don't have what it takes to take yourself there, your money will take you there, but your talent will bring you we'll back. Bring you so back. equally, okay. you need to be talent okay. and Coffee, money to actually comment. push. Sorry, something brief. Your final comments. Right. What about? The global. How do we put our, our, our music Well, out Well, I think first and foremost, we need to get past just the uh, being in our comfort zone mm. of just like, you know, locking ourselves in our studios, our rooms. And we should actually read and research and find out what industry standards are. And we need to be careful where we get, you know, some information because the internet is a free platform and literally almost every <laughs> idiot with an opinion has That's a platform, true. right? That's true. That's so, so true. It's, it's, we need to be intentional with... About it. With okay. working to improve our skill. All right, thank you so much. And that's our show for today. Thanks going out to Kofi Ayam, Beats Menace Bachianza. He's a multidisciplinary artist and creative entrepreneur, and also Wei Your Ting. He is a music producer and entertainment analyst. My name is Akofa. Thank you so much for watching.